Impact Crater. Oh, things are... That backdrop already. These thingerbobs already look pretty crazy. But can I go back with this? The answer is yes. Okay. So it's fair game to save there. Okay, but... Well, I know for sure now, you know. Now I know for sure. Well, I I did not need to do this again. I don't think I'm using that for a thumbnail shot anyway. Yeah, I can just... Okay. Cool. Alright, it's fine. I'm fairly certain there's a missile refill thing down here. It'd be nice if they were right next to each other. Both the, uh, both the save thing and the missile refill thing. But... But hey. I guess they should both be down here. Sure, I'll do a save. I'll do a save down here. Time to beat Metroid Prime. Again. <laughs> time to do it a second time. Alright, here we go. Did it once before. And it should be easier this time because one, I have better upgrades. And two, um, free aiming and stuff. Um, Lumagek, phase on charge reptiles. Natives of Talon 4, the Lumageks travel in swarms to increase their odds of survival. They absorb and radiate phase on energy, making these swarms a threat. Oh, good thing I have the phase on suit then, right? So, oh yeah, that's a lot more distinctive now in this version, isn't it? I've already analyzed you. Uh oh. Nope. Oh. Come on. You better not. Oh, come on! That's actually rigged! My goodness, out here looking like Marth's grab. When you miss me and then just immediately hit me a second later. Okay, hi. I was dodging! Oh, we're off to a great start here. No! Come on. I think I dodged into the wall or something. Ugh, I want to go into it with full health. Assuming I can make it past those guys. <laughs> I would prefer to face the final boss with full health. I should roughly remember how the final boss works, so... You know shouldn't be as difficult this time but it's just really unsatisfying going in with not full health you know it's honestly all it is well please don't land on any of them and well whatever man well that sucks all right so one of these doors is a uh, missile refill the other one is the way forward oh good oh good you love to hear it uh, hello? Where are you at? I heard you a second ago. Oh, come on! I'm just going. Screw it. Yeah, this looks way better than in the, uh, than in the original. And I was playing the original in HD on Dolphin. So, like, that already made it look better than, uh, than it was before. Unless, you know, you want to treat it like a Skyward Sword situation where it's like, come on! Where, uh, you know, it was never meant to look HD. I thought I could just, like, sidestep that. That's what I kind of hoped. Please. Oh, come on! You are... Pretty tired of you jerks. Come on. Come on. Really? It didn't get you? Really? No? I can't really move off this platform. Ugh. Do I hear more of them? I don't remember them being this much of a pain in this. Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? That... I got my buttons mixed up again. How many are there? Do they just respawn? Is there no point in killing them? 
Oh, you are kidding me. Come on. Well, I thought I was gonna miss that jump at first, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I'm not going in with full health. Sucks to suck. I'm just not gonna use it. Yeah, they are coming back. They are most definitely coming back then. I don't think I can pull that in from over there, can I? This is the uh, missile recharge room, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, there it is. Wait, missile station or map station? Missile station, yeah. You better not. You better not here. Hmm. Okay, I'm out of here. See ya. Yeah, these guys seem a decent bit more annoying to deal with than I remember here. I remember them being a lot more manageable than this. I hit the wall, of course. I hit it again. All right. Well, let's go. Because I have to hold right for this instead of forward. Weird. Yeah, I have to keep on holding right. And then I guess left here. Strange. Can I hold forward here? Here I can hold forward. Whoa. Yeah, you, um... You sure look some kind of way in the remastered version here, don't you? The great poison, huh? Oh my. My goodness, and now the uh, glowy effects on you as well. Oh, come on, get your butt over here. Come on. Come on. Whoa, let's go down. All right. Okay, well. New creatures has been downloaded to your logbook. Morphology, Metroid Prime, highly evolved, Phazon producing life form. The aberration known as Metroid Prime is the source of Phazon, making it immensely powerful. A genetic flaw makes it susceptible to certain weapons for brief periods. Only its head is truly vulnerable. Other attacks are a nuisance. Offensively, Metroid Prime has a number of natural and mechanical weapons at its disposal. These include ultra-frigid breath, multi-missiles, snare beams, and particle wave projecto projectors. Its massive strength and barbed carapace makes it lethal in melee combat. Recommended maximum firepower when engaging this enemy. Whoa. Yeah. So time to do a whole bunch of this. I thought you might lunge for a second there. Let's see if I remember generally how to handle this boss apart from like match the colors. Come on. Whoa. You're targeting that spot. I've done this once before. I can do it again. I have no doubt of that. Okay. It'll be better to do charge shots, I wonder. Okay. And here I can probably... Hmm. Well, I don't know how much of an advantage Super Missile will be. Wow, it just bounces off there. I need to make sure I'm getting a uh, exact shot, I guess. Ow. Okay, and then you go further down. Yeah, we're going to be doing that a few times here. A few times we'll be going down. Okay. What do you bet it's ice? Never mind. Imagine though. What did I get hit by that time? Okay, it's not quite that attack yet. It's not yet that one. Not yet. Ow. Big ouch. When are you going to do your dash, huh? When's it going to be? Yeah, some of these are bouncing back sometimes. Yeah, you seem to choose a very specific spot to, uh, whoa. Yeah, there. Ah, nice miss. And then do I go to the other side or, um, yeah, well, I go to the other side. Now it's ice. 
Ow. Might kind of have to wait until you uh, stay still for that one. So I may have to do. What am I getting damaged by? My own ice as it bounces back? Why is it like periodic? So weird. So yeah, while you're standing there. Yeah. So then you do that. What do you bet? It's this. Never mind. Never mind then. Yeah, so a lot of them seem to bounce back. So wait until you stand still then. For the most part. I think I shoot those, right? Maybe? Oh, charge shot it. Okay. Hey, missiles and stuff. Man. So I may as well do that, right? Okay, well, he's going down, which means I don't need to uh, go into more fall there again. I was like, man, how am I going to time this with those things coming after me as well? But I guess I don't need to worry about it. All right, what do you bet red this time? Oh, look how crazy that backdrop is. Red. Ah, what the heck is this? I don't remember this attack. Um, my goodness, he pulled me in with the uh, evil glare. Okay. Yeah, so I can get missiles from that. So I may as well get big shots while I can. Oh, wow, that just freezes you there. Okay, nice. Get the things. You love to see it. You're probably going to switch to something else now, right? And get one last shot. You have not gone ready yet. You have not yet done it. Man. Whoa, that almost hit me. Okay, nice. Oh, yeah, that jaw underneath. I can, like, really see the detail on this version. I couldn't really tell in the original. Red. Red, red, red. Here it comes. Red. Dang you. You. Okay, that burns through my missiles like crazy. I'm at 54 now, so. I'm just still over half. To be fair. I want to save it on some other thing, Bobs, you know. What I wouldn't mind doing. All right. Now, man, you do that. Red. 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 Time for some red. Okay. Whoops, I once again hit that while trying to press B to dodge. It's happened yet again. Oh, I you guess you're going down again. Down one more time. Oh, no, those missiles, though. Oh, man. Yeah, this is, the backdrops are really crazy now. You really like purple, don't you? Well, you especially like to seem everything but red, but, uh, seems like you really like purple here. Is the impression that I'm getting here from you. Whoa. Okay, I was kind of pushed up against the wall there. That's what it seems like. Ooh, now you're red. Or you were red, you might just immediately change. You're going again! Two in a row here! What? The heck is this? You weirdo? Okay, now you're switching to white, huh? Switching over to ice? Okay, come on. Man! Didn't quite get that in time. Gonna do it multiple times again? Maybe? Oh, I thought he was preparing for a dash for a hot second there. He was preparing for that. Okay, come on. Gonna dash now? Whoa! Gonna do it multiple times or... Purple, again! Again with the poiple. You just... Ah! Really like that, don't you? Oh, crap. Well, uh, come on. Okay. Seems we're doing this then. Oh, nice hit. 
Yep, doing that again. And then purple again. Again with that. You just really seem to like that one. My goodness gracious. Whoa. Yeah, that jaw is super crazy in this version, huh? My oh my. I was never able to pay that much attention to the jaw in the original. But in this version, it's pretty darn crazy. Ow. Rude. No. Okay, your health is almost down. Gonna do the uh, charge. Yep, there's that. Gonna do it multiple times here? Or... No, not this time? Not gonna be tempted by that? By the prospect of doing it multiple times? Okay. Nice. Okay. All right, we're going down. Down we go. I can see the map of this area. Wow. Oh, just like that. Interesting. All right, down we go. So what's this going to look like in the remaster, huh? Well, hi. Okay, uh, Metroid Prime. No occasion to be downloaded to your log, but morphology Metroid Prime, the core essence of Metroid Prime. The scan indicates that the Phazon energy form of Metroid Prime is invulnerable to all conventional weapons. Only attacks from a Phazon fused arm cannon will damage it. it generates pools of Phazon when it attacks, uses to fuel your suit's Phazon weapon system. The entity can also spawn Metroids to assist it in battle, rendering itself invisible when it does so. Oh my good gracious. So, pools of phase on, huh? It's not this, is it? No, I'm fairly certain you drop pools. Like that. Yeah. So then I have to go over there and charge up. That's what I gotta do. So let's see here. Whoa! Metroid Prime Hyper Mode. It's just like that. I don't need to worry about charging it up. Okay, so I can just hold it down. Okay. Thermal visor isn't going to help me. I do need the x-ray visor then. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to make a pool again. Right there. Where are you? I don't know where you went. You're right on top of me? I don't even see you. Well. Oh, because you need to switch back and forth between the uh, thermal visor and the x-ray visor. I remember now. Now I remember that. There's no point charging that up, I don't think. Unless I, you know, start charging this and be ready for when you uh, summon Metroids and stuff. Hello, hello, Mythic. Welcome to the final boss of Metroid Prime here. Then I need to switch to X-Ray. No, I have to switch to normal. That's what I have to do. I just saw that my reticle turned red there. Okay. So then. Yeah, I'll just be at the ready with ice in case you summon any Metroids. That's what I kind of figure here. Okay. Yeah, keep on doing that if you'd like. Alright, there's the Metroids. So I can just like, yeah, two for one there. Okay. Yes, this is indeed why the game is called that. This is what Metroid Prime here. The second time we'll have beaten you. What with this remaster coming out? There we go. Okay. They do the name drop. I right, put down a pool of phase on if you dare Put one down do it. I dare you I need you to not just be doing that, okay Yeah, you jerk Let's put down a pool of phase on like I can't use this can I 
I don't think I can use this. All right, there's the phase on. And there's Metroids. No! Oh, and they gave me missiles. So like, oh, come on. There we go. Some more damage to you like that. Oh, look how crazy my arm cannon gets with that. All right, now I'm gonna have to wait for you to put down a pool of phase on again. Yeah, so if you just didn't put down uh, pools of phase on, you know, I wouldn't ever be able to beat you. I would say yes. I do wish that they had done like some more quality of life changes, changes stuff around like, uh, like to face the final boss, for example, you need to collect 12 artifacts from throughout the world. A lot of which you can get like during your adventure while you're going around doing other things. But, uh, you know, a lot of what you need all the upgrades to get and you can't even get the hints about where all of them are until a decent bit later on. I was kind of hoping that this game would, uh, you know, just give you all the hints from the get go so that you can be actively collecting them throughout your adventure a bit more. But nope, it's the same old system there. Um, the new control scheme is pretty good. I, uh, there are some complaints. I, I'm kind of getting into review here now, but generally, yes, this is generally, yeah, how you do it. And I, I know I keep on making fun of Skyward Sword HD throughout this series, but it just makes me so upset about Skyward Sword HD and makes me really wish that, you know, that game got this game's treatment. You know, that's what I really wish here because this is an example of how you do generally do it. Well, could have been better, but generally, yes. Okay. Where the heck you at here, huh? Okay. There we go. So maybe one or two more of those. Maybe. It would have been cool if you got like more attack variety in the remaster as well. Like you just seem to do this one attack that I just jump to dodge. So it's not even really that hard, you know? Gotta admit those Skyward Sword at least had some killer joy cons even though they don't have anything to do with the software. At least they had some cool exclusive stuff there. Screw I'm power bombing these guys. I don't feel like dealing with them. Whoa. Oi. Probably one more after this, I would imagine, right? Yeah, so probably one more. Yeah, you only have like this one attack pretty much. So, yeah, it would have been really cool to see them, you know, change up this boss a little bit. Because it's just like, I just jump whenever he does that. Easy peasy, you know. Well, yeah, it's a really difficult final boss. What can I say? It's really hard. Screw, I have one more power bomb. Why you didn't go into the, okay, you did. Where the, ow, there. Cool. I was like, let's get one last scan. No! You better not! No, my edginess! my phase on suit crater collapsed in an imminent evacuate immediately oh it's a metroid escape sequence do i actually have to escape in time now nah. i was about to say i don't remember there being an actual escape sequence from there that would be a metroid game if the whole planet didn't blow up at the end oh look how good it looks We destroyed the great evil. Well, there we have Metroid Prime Remastered. Did I, uh, was my time pretty crappy? Did we not get any shot of Samus there then? I saw her taking off her helmet and stuff there. 
Man, how's your weekend been? Been too busy to chat much the past couple days. Real life is a thing. There's no worry about that. Weekend has been pretty all right. We did a full playthrough of Lin's story in Fire Emblem Blazing Blade yesterday because yesterday was my birthday. I usually don't, you know, bring a whole lot of attention to that because it feels like, ah, give me attention. But because it's already passed, it's like, hey, now it's fair game to mention. You know, <laughs> is what I figure here. But yeah, that was Metroid Prime Remastered. So yeah, I did generally really like this remaster. I, uh, in honestly, okay, I appreciate the gifted sub there, but maybe I should have mentioned it there. Maybe it was too much to, like give me attention. Gosh dang it. <laughs> I do appreciate it. My, my, oh my. Welcome on into Team Enharmonic. This is Orangey. <laughs> Hope you enjoy month of the emotes and the sub badge and mythic. I appreciate the gifted sub there. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I feel like this is a good example of generally how to handle a remaster. Like, I'm honestly debating, a part of me almost wants to make a uh, video essay on Skyward Sword HD versus Metroid Prime Remastered. On like, the do's and don'ts of how to handle a remaster. With, you know, Metroid Prime being how you do it and Skyward Sword HD being how you pump out the cheapest, easiest possible thing and for full price to make a quick buck off of an already popular IP. You know, uh, so dang gross. The short version is, in that game, they just upscaled it to HD without changing any of the textures at all. So the textures were designed for a 480p resolution, the way that the Wii was. But they were upscaled into HD without changing any of the textures, which meant that they looked pretty gross and not fitting and strange and like, ugh. And there would be a lot of lines where the textures wouldn't even match up that you wouldn't be able to see with a naked eye on like native 4EP graphics unless you looked really closely, but are really, really blatantly evident in HD and led to me, you know, I made the argument that Skyward Sword HD looks worse than the original Skyward Sword just because both use textures designed for 4EP graphics and one is in 4EP graphics and, you know, one is in HD and therefore the little issues like that become a lot more blatant and it's like, ugh, weird. Whereas with this, with Metroid Prime Remastered, they actually redid, you know, the textures, the models, the whole way that the world looked, like the world itself, like the actual models and stuff like that of like the world is still the exact same kind of thing. You know, where you're still going through the exact same environments, everything exactly the same. But in terms of how it looks, it looks fantastic. Like the visual appeal of this game was amazing. It was really cool and little and even including little details like the fact that the rain droplets on Samus's arm cannon will be going down the sides of the arm cannon and if you look up like that the droplets will be coming down that way and if you look down the arm the rain droplets will be going down that way little details like that where I was like whoa that's so cool like this is such a good game for you know having really nice graphics in a really immersive world like that because you know, it's a first person perspective through through the eyes of Samus. You're in the suit, you're playing in first person and you're looking through the display on this helmet, seeing the world around you. So on games like that, I feel like it's really important to have like a very immersive and real feeling world. And I felt immersed with this, I do have to say. I felt like that was pretty cool. I quite enjoyed that. You emulate your own PSP games just to play them at 1080p. I think you get what you speak of. Yeah, where it just kind of looks like not matching there. Now to try to switch out your rupee for a gift box. You like the rupee, go back to it. The rupee is pretty cool there. Yeah, so in terms of graphics, amazing, fantastic. Graphic wise, this is how you handle a remaster. I've already given like my full review of Metroid Prime as a game during like our Metroid Prime playthrough of the original there. So if anyone wants to see like my full review after beating Metroid Prime for the first time, just watch like the finale part of uh, my original Metroid Prime playthrough because I want to analyze this mostly as like a remake here, you know, from the perspective of that. Graphics wise, fantastic. Um, gameplay wise, I do really like the new control scheme for the most part. I do like how you can do any one of the control schemes where you can do like the original controls where you use the left stick to move around and then the right stick is switching between the different arm cannons and it kind of feels almost rail like and stuff that took me a decent bit to get used to in the original game but eventually I got used to it and I figured it out and stuff. Um, so you can do those controls. You can do the Prime 3 slash Prime Trilogy controls that are motion controls which you can either do with a uh, you know the smart motion of the pro controllers or 
with the uh with the joy cons i assume that it probably feel just like a wii remote and nunchuck with the uh with the joy cons pointing it around and stuff like that so i technically didn't try that out i tried out briefly with this and it felt like pretty alrighty. like it might be a little bit difficult to do like a full playthrough with that but you know boss battles might be kind of fun with that um but yeah the fact that you can do it with both the pro controller and joy cons and of course the new modernized controls with uh you know left stick to move and right stick to aim like you know most games that involve shooting like that would typically have well most video games would just have in general nowadays of like the left stick to move and then right stick is camera slash aiming you know seems every game retro studios that ever released is always pushing the processing of the console to the best conceivably possible yeah like there was a lot of details in this that i was like wow i'm playing a switch game right now and i'm not playing you know some beefed up game on my computer with my rtx 3070 you know like looking around at some sections of the world i would just have to stop and be like whoa whoa you know it was uh it was really cool also hope things are going well today poloco stefan um so the control schemes i generally liked um i do have some complaints about this control scheme that i use though i think one of my biggest complaints is that when you are playing like in first person as samus in the suit the jump button is b but when you switch to morph ball when you go into third person with the morph ball the jump button changes to x the other side of the face buttons so normally jump is this but the moment you switch to morph ball it's this why just why why not just have it be the exact same button it confused me to no end i kept on pressing the wrong buttons when i was trying to jump throughout this playthrough like it's something that pokemon legends arceus and pokemon scarlet and violet suffer from a bit as well but this was you know not super great there what's happening here whoa we did the thing so that was a little bit annoying um i don't know why they wouldn't just make it the exact same button that was pretty stupid um there we go percentage complete 64 percent um hard difficulty unlocked i'm not gonna be doing hard difficulty new extras unlocked in the main menu yeah so there might still be a decent bit to 100 percent it um so i might if i'm tempted i might 100 percent it on my own time if i just have like some free time like spending some time out at my family's late cabin or something like that we'll finish this game of metro primary house when you're second save slot again you'll start a new game in which case i do not want to save um i'd rather just reload that slot which means i know that there is a uh extra cut scene that you get in metroid prime when you uh when you 100 percent the game um, and because I didn't 100% it here, we have shown that cutscene just on YouTube at the end of the uh, Metroid Prime original playthrough. I'll show it again here, but with the remastered version. Let's find it on YouTube. Just because, you know, it kind of hints at what's to come is the case. Um, so that was something about the controls I didn't like. Another thing that I didn't like is the fact that when you go into Morph Ball, you can't use the right stick to, like, move your camera anymore. You use the right stick to move your camera normally, but in the uh what when you're in morph ball form you just have to like be subject to the whims of, of whatever camera angle it gives you which i f thought was pretty silly there um what are some other things gameplay wise uh hold on let's let's show the thing we're about first metroid prime remastered 100 percent ending let's see here let's just show the thing we're bob just so that it's showcased here um metroid prime remastered secret ending at a uh at 100% completion. There's no silly watermarks in this, right? Perfect. There's no silly watermarks in this. Hey, when people put silly watermarks on their videos. Um, let's see here. If we, um, put on display capture and I press the home button here first. All right. Thank you, Medi333, for not putting any silly watermarks. So <laughs> you saved the freaking clip there. Um, escape ending. So 100% the, uh, 100% the game. Wait, there's a narrator? Faith in Samus has been welcomed Wait, I thought I saw that in settings. A new star shines in the universe. Forgot that was like a thing in settings that you could do. Samus Aran. What future and fate await her? I don't know. We'll find out in uh We'll find out in Metroid Prime 2. Yeah, so I didn't get good enough like game completion to get that. I got, you know, most of my logbook scans and stuff. I got all the missable ones, you know, which means that it is 100%able without starting New Game Plus if I ever want to. That looks like it might be a little bit of a cramped ship seeing you two, like, side by side like that. All right, there we go. Escape ending, leaving Talon 4, so we got that. 
Yeah. And then here's the thing that happens. I'll even turn off like my camera and stuff. Here's the thing or Bob. After Metroid Prime yoinked that phase on suit. Ugh. There it is. Our main antagonist for the coming games, Dark Samus, who is, you know, Metroid Prime. You got 100% in about the same time I played through the WoW. Yeah, I, uh, before I started this playthrough, I looked up. Since I'd already played through it once, I was like, all right, let's play through it this time scanning a whole bunch of things. So I looked up what things are, like, important to record because they're really missable. So I did, yeah, I did record those. So that's a okay there. But yeah, so at the end of Metroid Prime, Metroid Prime is seemingly defeated and you winks Samus's phase on suit and then, you know, kind of infests the phase on suit and becomes Dark Samus. And yeah, so you can say that Metroid Prime is still alive and we'll find out what happens, I guess, in Metroid Prime 2 when it hopefully comes to the Switch. Yeah, like I've mentioned before, we can do Metroid Prime Hunters when I get the chance in the near future. I doubt that that's going to get a remaster on the Switch, so I feel like Metroid Prime Hunters is still fair game. So we'll do uh, Prime Hunters next whenever we continue with Metroid, since uh, it takes place between Metroid Prime 1 and 2 anyway. And it's like a little side adventure thing, I think. I mean, it might have some connections. With I don't remember. We'll find out when we get that far. Um, but I'm going to hold off on playing Prime 2 and Prime 3 because there's a chance that they might come to the Switch now. You know, I was planning on playing through the original of the Prime Trilogy because I was like, they're not coming to the Switch. So I played Prime 1 and then Prime 1 came to the Switch. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I should have held off. So now I've learned my lesson. I'm going to hold off. Um, But hey, now I've played both the original and the remaster of Metroid Prime. But I'll just, you know, I'm going to hold off for now. So if they reveal remasters for Prime 2 and 3 on the Switch, I'll play them. I'll cover them on the channel. If they release like, oh, Prime 4 is coming out like half a year from now or a year from now or whatever the heck without any news on Prime 2 and 3 on the Switch, and then I'll just be like, all right, I'll just play the originals in that case. That's my plan. That's what's going to be the case for the uh, for the Prime situation around here. So we can do Prime Hunters at some point when I uh, when I get the chance in my game schedule and then uh, we'll hold off on Prime 2 and 3 is my plan there out of curiosity out of a smidge of curiosity here um you can now access the difficulty setting when starting a new game i don't think i'm interested there how many extras did i unlock anyway how many here concept gallery let's see here yeah so i've unlocked a lot of them here i'll show the full things then I mean, I won't be going through all of them because I don't have all of them unlocked, evidently. Okay, so I might have to go elsewhere to find uh, the full thing we're Bob for anyone interested in that. But generally, I can show generally what's going on here. Yeah, there's some, uh, there's some pretty crazy stuff. So I wonder if this was concept art for the original game or the remaster then. I would assume it's when the designs were first made then, right? Yeah, that's pretty crazy stuff there. Look at all that. All kinds of critters. All kinds of them. All right. Biology remaster. Oh, yeah. So that was the original. So here's some concept art for the remastered version, I guess. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, cool. Yeah, with so much more uh, clear details on things like those. Like, I could not quite tell where they're... Uh, where their eyes were. They just kind of looked like statues in the original there. Now they look like a mix of statues and a real thing that exists there. There's Flagra. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, there's those pesky ice shriek bats. Yeah, so if anyone wants to see, like, the full thing, they have to go elsewhere. Sorry. Not gonna be a 100% playthrough. So, yeah, here's World of the Original. That's pretty cool, actually. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, that's rather neat. And then World Remastered. We have... Whoa! Yeah, that had so much more detail in that intro section. 
compared to the uh compared to the original like i could actually clearly tell what was going on there like maybe i just went through the original a bit too fast and i wasn't paying enough attention but you know i feel like a lot of the details blurred together in the original here it's a lot more evident here's a parasite queen that broke out and started wreaking havoc before it died you know the case wow yeah oh that's really cool actually that is really neat. Yeah, and then there's the world. Yeah. Oh, and there's a T-posing Samus in the bottom right corner there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. There's another T-posing Samus. I guess that's for like a sense of scale for uh, as they're plying stuff out here to, you know, get an idea of how large exactly it'd be. Huh. That's pretty neat. Oh, character gallery. Ooh, I guess I have all the things here. Oh, and I can... Oh, I can even inspect it around and stuff. Okay. So there's the first Samus there. Then the Varya suit. Oh, and you can even see the effects with the uh, beam is going and stuff. Cool. More fall. In case you want to inspect any of the... Uh, any of the models in closer detail there. Your space pirates. Uh, parasites. There's the parasite queen. Uh, yeah, all these thing were bobs that I went around scanning. Look at that all. Yeah, that's cool. Gamer. You're only a real gamer when you put a hundred hours into Metroid. She goth, she goth. Thardis. Mega turret. Oh, yeah, the effects going. That is pretty neat. Yeah, those guys have become a little bit more of a pain to deal with. Elite pirate. A mega pirate. Yeah, you were a bit of a pain too. Weren't you? Oh, and you can see like partially invisible here. That's neat. Flying pirates. Aqua pirates. Phase on elite. Cool. Meta Ridley. Whoa. You're pretty crazy, aren't you? Metroids. Oh, you can see like the various varieties and stuff. Oh, that's neat. Hunter Metroid. You're pretty freaky, aren't you? Metroid Prime. Yeah, the detail on you and those jaws at the bottom now. My goodness. Metroid Prime Core. Wow. Neat. <laughs> Metroid Prime Remastered. I have trophies, but not Smash Ultimate. Guess not. Hope things are going well today. His first eyes. Let's see here, soundtrack gallery. Yeah. 23 out of 29 uh, nine items unlocked. I like the backdrops with each of these. It's pretty cool. You know. Pretty neat. Yeah, just a. I could show like the scenes that shows there. Lagra. Magmore Caverns. Andrana Drifts has a good theme. Andrana Secrets. Huh. Andrana Battle. There's good old Thardis, the crash ship. And that's a pretty relaxing theme there. The uh, underwater theme. It's pretty neat. Yeah. All these themes. Yeah. So I'm still missing some here. Okay. Um, let's finish off my review here. Um, I like the extras. The extras are pretty cool. And the extra incentive to, uh, you know, 100% the game. You know, makes the player feel a lot more compelled to 100% this game than the original when you have, you know, stuff like this here. Fun fact, Flagra's theme was bugging. Keep you only play like the first 30 seconds before. Oh yeah, I think I heard something about that. Where it's like, that was something that, uh, <laughs> that the remaster fixed apparently yeah i uh in terms of other things to mention um soundtrack looking at it from a remaster standpoint the music is the same the uh the soundtrack hasn't been remastered and i do feel like i would prefer a remastered soundtrack but at the same time you know 
the original is a really, really good example of how to do atmospheric music, in my opinion. Like, in my opinion, you know, something like Breath of the Wild, it says like, oh, we made an amazing atmospheric soundtrack when the soundtrack doesn't even play for like 99% of your playtime. In my opinion, this is the kind of thing that you do to do atmospheric soundtrack, where it's like, a lot of people treat, you know, the Breath of the Wild soundtrack situation where it's like, either it's in your face adventurous, or it's like almost non-existent. There's no in between. It's either in your face adventurous or non-existent atmospheric. This is how you do atmospheric. So, you know, the soundtrack wasn't exactly in a desperate need of a remaster, but I would have really liked to see what kind of a modern take they would have done to something like this, you know? It would have been cool to see. Um, what else is there to mention? Um, in terms of gameplay, there are some, there's some weirdness about, you know, Metroid Prime 1 that I do wish they had fixed up a little bit. Namely, one of the biggest things being that when you first go to the artifact temple, it'll give you hints about where to get some of the artifacts, but not all of them, which means you can go the first time, get some of the hints, then go through like most of the game and then come back and get the rest of the hints, or maybe after you've gotten so many artifacts or something like that. You should just be able to get all the hints right from the get-go. It'll save you, save you extra backtracking just so that you can check your menu for all the hints, you know, whenever after the first time you visit. Instead of being like, a, either going to the internet like I did, or having to go back to the temple and get like the two or three hints that you weren't allowed to get before. I think that's a little bit silly and they probably should have changed in the remaster, but what do I know? What do I know about that? Fine with them not touching the right perfect OST, no need to risk butchering it. Cough, cough, Xenoblade Definitive. Well, they didn't butcher it, they just made it different. And in Xenoblade Definitive, you can turn on the original soundtrack if you want. You can switch between either or. So it's not like it's completely replaced, you know, a soundtrack that you like with one that you don't like. I actually really like Xenoblade Definitive's way that they handle their soundtrack. That's a really good example of how to uh, handle a Definitive Edition soundtrack there, where it really didn't need it but they made things in a new style. Like a really good example of that is Satoral Marsh, where Satoral Marsh was already amazing. And the remastered version of it was, in my opinion, not better or worse, just different. And that's the way that they handled a lot of the uh, a lot of the themes in that game. And they were like, yeah, let's also give the player the option to toggle between the original or the remastered versions. And a lot of the themes are just different without being necessarily better or worse. Some themes I would argue are definitely better. And whenever I use Xenoblade soundtrack in any of my videos, like my Minecraft Peculiar Potion series, I always use the remastered version because I typically find them to be better. Um, it would have been really cool to see a remastered soundtrack in here that also let you toggle between the remastered version and the original version, something like Xenoblade did. Tunes of Metroid Prime are not among your favorite soundtrack, but definitely memorable compared to Breath of the Wild. Like, yeah, I hear something like Fendrana Drifts and it's like, oh yeah, that's Fendrana there. Oh uh, yeah. I know that. Hey, that too makes 100% scan log a pain. Yeah, there's there's that too that it makes it a little bit of a pain for. Wait, does that mean that I missed some scans if I needed to scan the hints for the thing where Bob's that I missed? Oh, whatever. I'm not too hell-bent on a wanting to 100% scan log. I just figured I'd try to get most of the missable scans along the way just in case on the off chance I ever felt spicy there. But yeah, um... That's even dumber from I'm, I've played the crap out of this game and now know where the artifacts are without hints perspective just because you need to go back and still get the uh, hint for scan log then. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty silly in that case. Um, story, they didn't need to change anything about the story, so I don't really need to mention anything about that in the remaster there. I do like how, you know, you can go through relatively blind and just be like, I don't know, I'm just fulfilling objectives, what am I doing? But if you take the time to scan things, it's like, Oh, so that's what's going on here. You know, I find it a, uh, I find it to be an interesting model there. Um, anything else weird about the gameplay to, uh, mention? I feel like there's a lot of stuff that, you know, stressed me out and stumped me on my original playthrough that I didn't run into this time just because I knew what to expect. Namely, like that tower Chozo artifact, where it's like, you have to blow open this ice in this little window and then shoot this one specific little structure along that tower and then it comes down and you can get the chosen artifact stuff like that i think is pretty dumb and uh you know could have uh, been a lot more clear i remember being stumped on that for a good while way back uh way back less than one year ago um this time i got it no problemo just because i knew what to do but you know it's uh pretty silly there but yeah and yeah there there is that but yeah, I do wish that 
artifact hints could have been clear. You could have gotten all of them from the get-go. Um, what else? I wish the Chozo ghost didn't respawn as often as they did. Like, I would, uh, I would go into the Hall of the Elders, fight the Chozo ghost there, go do something in, like, the adjacent room for a little bit, then come back in, and now the Chozo ghost respawn and try to fight me. I was like, come on! You know, stuff like that can be kind of annoying sometimes. Um, anything else about it? So there were definitely some complaints that I had. You know, it definitely wasn't, you know, perfect by any means. There are some things I wish that they'd fix slash change to, you know, really, really flesh this out compared to the original. But for the most part, I like this remaster. It was a good remaster. And like, if this is the quality that I can expect for a potential Prime 2 and Prime 3 on the Switch, absolutely, I buy it in a heartbeat. Like, no doubt about that. Heck, if this is the quality that I could expect of Nintendo remasters in general, sign me up, I'll buy it. Like, if I can expect the quality of Skyward Sword HD in terms of Nintendo remasters, then, you gross, why the heck, why would I get that? Like, I get it as a content creator to showcase it, but, you know, play it and then just prove to myself, like, this is not worth full price, this is pretty darn pointless. It's gonna sell like gangbusters because it's Zelda. Um, so if I can expect quality of Skyward Sword HD, then gross, no chance. But if Metroid Prime Remastered is the kind of quality of remaster I can expect from Nintendo's remasters, then sign me up. Absolutely worth it. You know, I uh, I quite enjoyed this. This was a good time. Anyone that hasn't played Metroid Prime before, like, and you're curious about it, I would say, like, give it a shot. Download it, try it out. We'll download it or wait for them to actually stock more physical copies because I know that they've been uh, struggling, struggling with that. Because... It is a game that, you know, despite having come out in originally in what, 2002, 2003? Hell, <laughs> his ghosts don't lock the doors? Oh, was that a thing that they were doing in the original that I forgot about forcing you to fight them? At least there's that then. Um, but yeah, for a game that came out in like 2002, 2003, whatever the heck, it still holds up today pretty well. Like, not perfectly, as I've mentioned before. Like, there's still some finickiness, like with the Chozo artifacts being probably the biggest thing there. Um, there being no fast travel around. At least it doesn't take too long to get from point A to point B in this game, but sometimes some routes when you need to go pretty far are pretty annoying. Oh, that reminds me. One section, I needed a power bomb to get by, um, and I didn't have any power bombs, and I had to run all the way back to my ship because enemies don't really drop power bombs enough. Um, so there's one more complaint. Um, if you're out of power bombs, then enemies should drop at least, like, one power bomb, like, pretty semi-frequently, so you don't have to worry about, like, Oh, I need to get past this thing, but I don't have a power bomb. Time to run all the way back to my ship and all the way back just to get through this one thing that turned out to be like, I guess it did turn out to be the way that I needed to go. It was a missile upgrade and the way that I needed to go. It's still so dumb though that I needed to backtrack all the way to my ship through the underwater sequence and then go all the way back through the uh, underwater sequence to uh, <laughs> to just get, you know, I only need one power bomb. That was it so silly so you know there is some uh you know 20 plus year old game silliness like that that i do wish they could have patched up so it doesn't hold up perfectly by today's standards but generally i'd say it still holds up pretty well and it's a really fascinating game to play just to see you know how impactful and influ influential it would have been on the industry like you know there's a whole metroidvania genre nowadays that comes from metroid and castlevania and you know I feel like the uh, most influential Metroid games is probably Super Metroid first, um, but then probably Metroid Prime second, right? Maybe? Unless uh, unless we're talking maybe OG Metroid second and then maybe Metroid Prime third? I don't know. But the first Metroid Prime has got to be up there in terms of like importance in the series in terms of its impacts on the gaming industry, right? This was the first ever 3D Metroid. I'm sure that there's a lot of games out there that have based a lot of their level designs off of it, right? Oh, that just ends pretty soon then, um, is the, uh, is the case. Like, I was talking earlier this stream about how, uh, the way that the ship and the Talon overworld there is kind of like the center point of the world, and it's a hub that connects to a lot of different points. Kind of reminds me of Dark Souls Firelink Shrine, and it wouldn't surprise me if you know, Dark Souls and its world design and the way that it handled exploring out and eventually having it loop back to the center point could well have been inspired from games like this. It's a really good example of how to handle that kind of thing, and I find that really fascinating. So I think that it's also a really interesting game to play just from the perspective of 
you know, seeing like early uses of these kinds of, you know, designs, like having things loop back like that. And I find that really interesting. So yeah, so it wasn't perfect. I do have like my handful of complaints there, but generally this was a pretty good remaster. This is a pretty good game. And if I can expect this level of quality for a Metroid Prime 2 and 3 potentially on the Switch, then sign me up. You know, it was a, uh, this was, this was good. I recommend. But yeah, man, why did they always have a hard time stocking the games people want? Nintendo produces 60% Pokemon cartridges and 40% other. <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, they, uh, they weren't expecting this to actually be super duper popular. And it's funny. It's funny with Nintendo, what they charge with what they know they can get away with. Like Skyward Sword HD, literally just put into HD. Here's a new control scheme that's really crappy. Um, and then resell it at full price on the Switch. Easy peasy, easy money. And then they pumped out a whole bunch of those. Whereas Metroid Prime Remastered, which in my opinion, as I was saying there, is an actual good example of how to do a remaster. Limited stock that, because they weren't expecting it to be that popular and not full price. Full price games here in Canada are $80. Um, this costs $50 here. I think it's, what, like 40 in the States? Something like that, with full price games being 60 soon to be 70 Um, So, the fact that, you know, the uber popular one gets the crappy, lazy pump-out remake at full price, and the more niche game gets, like, the really fleshed out and actually amazing remaster at not full price, it really goes to show how Nintendo really does, you know, just kind of put out what they know they can get away with, because, you know... Zelda's popular enough that they can get away with that whereas they figure that Metroid isn't enough that they can't so they're actually gonna put time and effort into this and uh, man <sighs> Nintendo why can't you just put effort into all your things why couldn't Skyward Sword HD be like this then I could actually say that it's a definitive version and that that might be my favorite Zelda game is HD but no I'll keep on saying that Skyward Sword OG is my favorite Zelda game and that Skyward Sword HD is my least favorite Zelda game because screw that overpriced ripoff um, no ghosts never lock doors on you and force you to fight them. You can usually ignore them. Oh, um, I thought you were saying ghosts don't lock doors as if that was a change from the original. Um, Def Super first and then this. You think so there? Uh, uh, Skyward Sword, but prettier. Also quality of life lock behind it. No, it's not prettier though, because it had textures that were designed for 480p graphics and they didn't change any of the textures. So it's literally uglier than the original game because you can clearly see the points where textures don't match up and... Uh, little details and textures that you weren't able to see in 40p graphics that you can see in hd this is a good example of changing textures and improving the world to make it prettier skyward sword on the switch looks uglier than it did on the wii just because they increase the amount of pixels without changing any of the textures so the 40p textures have like really blatant issues and stuff so they literally made it worse and charge full price for it so you love to see nintendo doing stuff like that there is a there's that does that keep playing on the menu now nope it does not. But yeah, so definitely a much better example of how to do a remaster here. <laughs> While Skyward Sword is an example of how to charge full price for a port and call it an HD remaster when it's not. <laughs> Essentially, um, but yeah, you have emulator PSP collection saying people, some games did end up with jank texture, most games look better anyway, somehow even with this low res UI. You wanna show, oh, this shit, hold on. You wanna see where, oh, I have to move all these. Turns out in Skyward Sword, there are a lot, a lot of lines where textures just don't even match up um, that I never noticed in the original. I had no idea. Um, let's see here. Let me take out my Switch just because it's going to be easier to change out the cartridge. Do I have it in here? Is the question of the day. The answer is I might have put it back on the shelf because I just want to forget about it. This is what I might well have done. My other game case is where did I put it? Where did I put my other game case? I don't think it would be in my other game case. I think I probably put it back on the shelf because I just wanted to forget about it. Oh, it's, um, my other game case is resting on top, like, underneath that. Because I keep mostly multiplayer games in this one. Yeah, so it wouldn't be in here. I must have put it back on the shelf just to say, screw this, forget about it. I want nothing to do with this anymore. Um, I can show for reference how to like one of the worst possible ways you can handle a remaster where is it on my shelf let's see here um when did it come out again when it came out oh here it is i think let's 
let's see, did I put it back in the case? Yep, I sure did. I put it back on the shelf being like, yeah, screw that. No more of that. Here, let me show this. Let's have a quick look-see here, for reference. Ugh. Let's just see. Let's show what this is like. Wah. Wah. Let's just see. As we're wrapping up our Metroid Prime Remastered review, let's show how not to do a remaster. <laughs> and the audio is gone for some reason. Let's fix that. All right, let's go to Skyloft and show a thing, Bob, here real quick. I'm gonna switch my game category to just chatting for now, I guess. Um, let's see here. All right, can I not go back up to Skyloft with this one? Gosh dang it! Let's use the uh, uh, the stupid. Thing, I guess. Oh, I almost dropped Ravali, Ravali, Ravioli, Ravioli. Give me the Formioli. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, I can't go up to the sky because it's the past. I remember now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on here. First of all, just. Whoa. How do I do free camera again? Like this. First of all, mmm. You love to see that HD quality. Mmm. Beautiful. Absolutely stellar. Totally. Uh, when did this come out? 2021. Totally 2021 standards here. Just absolutely gorgeous. You love to see it. All right. Go this way. I mainly want to go to Skyloft. <laughs> so I mainly want to do. Hold on. Get me on through here. And then go this way. Let me on out. Get me out of here. Mmm, scrumptious. Yeah, this, um... This is totally hitting the same graphics quality of the game that we were just playing. Hmm, really good. All right, let's see here. Use Amiibo. I'm just gonna tap this stupid thing. There we go. You will recognize you wish to return to the sky. Yep. Plus the Amiibo situation there. They're telling me is that they basically just upscaled the game and said it was a remaster. What in reality you did it in your spare time with an emulator? Yes. The only additions are a quality of life feature behind an amiibo and uh, a new control scheme that doesn't even work that well. So yeah, you can actually find 4K texture packs for Skyward Sword for Dolphin, interestingly enough, is a, is a thing that you can do that fans have made for free. But Nintendo will charge full price for releasing the exact same game upscaled. Like, if we go and have a look at a path, for example. Mmm. Mmm. Beautiful. Even more beautiful than the original game. But yeah. They did change Skyward from 30 FPS to 60 FPS. Oh, well, there is at least the FPS increase then. Mmm. I love being able to see the lines where the textures don't match up that you wouldn't be able to see on native 40p graphics. Delicious, scrumptious, man. I'm so glad that they released this at full price. Man, this is so worth it. I'm so glad that they did proper justice to my favorite Zelda game. Absolutely amazing. Mmm. You love to see it. Also, with the, uh, with the new control scheme that they did for uh, button controls, where you use the right stick to uh, control the sword, which does make sense. If you want to do a spin attack, it's command inputs. Left, right, left is spin attack, left. Right, left, right is spin attack, right. Which means that you can no longer just, like, spam swing, or else you'll run out of stamina. Because if you do left and right rapidly, you'll just do that. Whereas in, with the normal control scheme, you can just do back and forth rapidly and do rapid swings. Yeah, so if you use like the new improved, well not improved controls, but the new different controls, 
Um, yeah, you just lose your ability to do rapid swings. I mean, unless you do like one direction, I guess, but you can't just do like a, you know, back and forth really quickly like you could in the original. You had not seen those lines yet having only played the original. Yeah, I would have never noticed this because they designed it in such a way that like it's there, but you would never notice with 4EP graphics unless you looked really, really closely. And why would you? Whereas in HD, look, you can just see it on either side of the path, just right in your face. So that's <laughs> that's kind of why I are making the argument that Skyward Sword HD looks worse than the original game because there's a lot of details like this that were designed with 480p graphics in mind that hide the blemishes in 480p graphics but don't get hidden when you play in HD. But th they don't care about that. This game sold like crazy anyway because it's Legend of Zelda, so, you know, easy money, I guess, for cheapest possible price. So, how not to handle a remaster? How to handle a remaster. So yeah, in my review of Metroid Prime Remastered here, that is absolutely how to handle a remaster, and I wish that Skyward Sword HD got like the same quality rather than this cesspool of, I'm putting it back in its case, I'm putting it back on its shelf. I don't want to see this again for a long, long time. <laughs> but yeah, you understand for a full price console game in the 2020s, it's awful. For somebody who plays a conservative under early 2000 games, it's kind of normal. For yeah, if you're playing on emulation, just like, you know, playing a whole bunch of games for free, emulated and stuff like that, then it's like, yeah, that's the kind of thing you crop up, that crops up from time to time. But if you just went to the store and you paid $80 for your favorite Zelda game and you pop it into the Switch and that's just how the world looks. It's like, did I just get duped? You know, is what it's basically more like. Oh man, let's put this back on the shelf and forget it exists. Oh, that's a good year. Hate that game. So yeah, the do's and don'ts of uh, handling a remaster, in my opinion, there. Do Metroid Prime Remastered. Do not do Skyward Sword HD. And what the really sad part is, I have no doubt that Skyward Sword HD is gonna sell, like, much more than Metroid Prime Remastered. It sounds like, uh, it sounds like Metroid Prime Remastered is actually hitting it off pretty well, which is really cool. But I have no doubt that Metroid Prime Remastered even Metroid Prime 4. I don't think any Metroid Prime title will ever scratch the surface of how many units Skyward Sword HD ended up selling. That's the sad thing there. Is, you know, I'll put my Amiibo back on the shelf here. More about the uh, brand name than the quality. We see that with Pokemon nowadays, too. Oh, man. What a world we live in, huh? But yeah, older stuff in World of Warcraft that was never updated still looks like that. It's still around. It's a little over 4 million copies of that does mean only a fraction of Breath of the Wild players have brought Skyward Sword HD, so Nintendo may have lost potential profits from its uninspiring effort. Huh. Because when I think of people talk about Skyward Sword HD, there was, like, not a whole lot of press around it. It was just like, hey, here's a big thing that's coming out, but then ever since it came out, it really hasn't, you know, stayed in the mainstream. I feel like Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD have relatively stayed in the mainstream. That could just be, just be because people are asking for it to come to the Switch. So, you know, the results might be a little bit skewed because of that. But I feel like, and you know, hopefully it's not my own bias speaking of being, of, you know, applying my own impression to, you know, people at large. So I might be, uh, I might be misjudging the situation, but it's felt to me at least like a Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, which I don't know if they did the same kind of thing there where they didn't increase any of the uh, textures. I'm not entirely sure, but it felt like those, uh, had more of a lasting impact, whereas Skyward Sword HD came out and then just kind of got forgotten immediately after. But again, that could well be because of factors like people want Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD on the Switch as well. Plus, the thing that got the limelight for Legend of Zelda on the Switch from here is Tears of the Kingdom, so, you know, I guess it would sort of make sense that Skyward Sword HD would, uh, you know, kind of get forgotten about. So that might kind of skew those results, but still. It feels like it kind of came out and then immediately got forgotten about. Because, I mean, this game kind of came out as a, here's something to play while you continue to wait for Tears of the Kingdom, you know, rather than, you know, standalone big releases on the Wii U, like Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD were, you know. So, that could well be factors there, I'm not entirely certain. But, yeah, there's, there's that. So, yeah, 
I liked Metroid Prime Remastered. That was a uh, that was good. It wasn't perfect, but it was good. Would recommend. I I would much more gladly support games like that than Skyward Sword HD. If, if I wasn't a content creator, I never would have bought Skyward Sword HD. Like looking at the trailers of gameplay, I was like, oh no, it's no. <laughs> And then I played it and it was even worse than I expected. And I was like, oh man. It's the same thing with Pokemon stuff on the channel. I would not buy modern Pokemon games if I wasn't a content creator. It's just for the sake of showcasing them and giving my reviews and stuff. Yeah. But, so if I wasn't a content creator, the kind of game that I'd be buying would be Metroid Prime Remastered. And not games like Skyward Sword HD. That's where I would put my money, you know. That would be the kind of thing that I say with my vault. Well, this is the kind of quality that I want, you know, personally. But yeah. Um, that was that. That was Metroid Prime Remastered. Next time we play some Metroid on the channel, it'll probably be Metroid Prime Hunters, which I'll do whenever there's a lot of breathing room on the channel. So it might not be for a little while. <laughs> I'll give it some time. Maybe we'll play it later this year or maybe another year. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I think that I, I might switch to stream in another game. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. So let's uh, go to the BRB screen and figure out what we're going to do. So with that, thanks everyone who stopped by for some Metroid Prime Remastered here. And until next time, take care and see you. Let's figure out another video game to play. <laughs>